Is Lake of the Prairies the best carp fishing Canada has to offer? This fall, I set out to find out. But first, how did this trip come to be? Earlier this year, I received a message from a Mr. Wayne Smith, which at the time, I vaguely remembered as just a person who commented on an Instagram post of mine. He asked me if I wanted to be part of a new carp fishing group. He told me about the platform and how this group was to be different than the rest, and it wasn't long before I joined the Canadian Carp Society. Shortly after joining, I met a handful of new people, which I previously only saw on Instagram or Facebook, but didn't really have any contact with. Some were content creators, others were not, but we all shared the same love for carp fishing. One of them stood out, and for good reason. Ryan Ginter was an absolute legend, posting massive fish consistently, and I was absolutely intrigued. Checking out his profile, I noticed he lived in Manitoba. What are all these carp doing in Manitoba, I asked myself. Manitoba is not known for large carp. How are all of them this big? The answer is Lake of the Prairies. Sometime in the spring, I approached Ryan about the possibility of doing a campaign this coming fall. Chatting with fellow CCS members, I mentioned my plans to see if anyone else would like to embark on this trip with me. I only got one text. It was from Anthony, a fellow CCS member from Saskatchewan, asking me if he could join. It was perfect. We started discussing gear, bait, and figured out all the logistical problems in the coming months. Until it was finally showtime. Well, we're just on our way to the airport right now, and uh, you may recognize my dad, Paul Sr. He uh, joined me on the island campaign last year. We're, um, we're heading out to the prairies and the start of, well, what's to be the Prairie Banks. We're gonna meet with Anthony real soon over there and uh, Ryan Ginter a little bit later. I met Paul through the uh, CCS. We, we talked a little bit about planning a trip out here next spring and uh, possibly doing a larger campaign to see what the Prairies really has to offer and things just lined up and we started talking and we planned a trip to fish this year, this fall, as quick as possible. And what worked out for us is, a, is about a week long campaign to try to target some of these larger fish in this lake. Okay, my name's Anthony Russell. Um, I grew up in the south of Britain and uh, emigrated to Canada, Saskatchewan, in 2009. Um, very, very keen carp angler, been doing it for about 34 years. And recently, uh, the Canadian Carp Society was, was uh, launched and um, it's brought together a lot of good anglers. So, two of those anglers, one being Ryan Ginter, which I'm sure many of you will know that name, and uh, Paul Choker. A month or so before the trip, Ryan began milling his own base mix and making a crazy amount of boilies. A fishy one, a chocolatey one, a fruity one, all sorts, amounting in the end to a staggering 100 kilograms. Closer to our arrival, he started preparing the most particle I've ever seen for a campaign done in Canada. He boiled cracked corn, whole corn, chickpeas, and even procured some lentils to mix things up. While he was busy with preparing all the particle in boilies, I purchased 60 kilograms of monster crab and 40 kilograms of corn tiger nut boilies from Carb Kit, and I shipped them out to Manitoba.
Brian went on and baited the spot with particles and boilies, slowly ramping up the quantities closer to our arrival. Back in Ontario, a day before departure, I was preparing big fish rigs, large number two hooks with really long hairs, when Ryan let me know of some bad news. I just knew something was going to go wrong. And, uh, well, looky, looky, I get out to the sandbar and, uh, all of a sudden she's, uh, wobbling. Fuck. If I can search one locally. Now, as I'm waiting for my delayed flight, Anthony comes through with some good news. Well, things are looking up. We got her. We're back on track. My plane ride was a cool three and a half hours out of Toronto to Regina. From Regina, I drove and met up with Anthony in Yorkton, which is about one hour away from our final destination, Roblin, Manitoba, which is right beside Lake of the Prairies. I, I think I think we're going to get a break. I mean, I think we just got to get those bivvies up. As I hope you're right. <laughs> so after a shit ton of rain, it finally stopped when we finished setting up, of course. And um, we're going to put some rods in, and hopefully we're going to get a run and uh, show you some fish tomorrow morning. I think there's a Ronnie in order. Right on, right on Ronnie's. Hey, what's going on in here? Come on in. It's Holy nice shit, warm. it's warm as fuck in here. Well, I'm trying to dry out some stuff, so I turn it on and... Come on in. Uh, I am in. Oh. Welcome to my humble home. <laughs> uh, Ryan the machine. Without Ryan's help, this wouldn't have happened. So, well, we're going to be thanking Ryan a lot uh, if we catch. If we don't, well, fuck. Fuck him. <laughs> That's you, Paul. In? That's you. That's Anthony. Wait, there we are.
That's that's got a head on it. That's got a that's that's a good that's a good thirty. What'd you say? That's a thirty. Yeah? I think so. Yeah, that's 39. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, if that is a sign of things to come, that is unbelievable. First fish of the first morning after a bit of a hectic afternoon yesterday, 19 fish to 31. And first fish of the day, 39 pounds. Smashing my Canadian PB. That's insanity. Wow. Okay, Anthony here. First morning of the Prairie Branks tour. And after thinking the fish had moved out after yesterday's onslaught, this bad boy turned up at 39 pound. First fish of the morning. Unbelievable. Just phenomenal. First morning of the prairie banks. And uh, we got some beautiful commons here. Mine's a 29 and a half. Mine's a 39. This is a 31 and a half black eyed beauty. Fantastic start, the prairie bank session. Amazing. These two little ones came last night. Little ones. <laughs> and this beautiful, is this your, now your new PB? Yeah. This is a gorgeous fish, is actually missing a fin from birth. My Canadian PB. First morning. Hopefully bigger things to come. There she is. Lake of the Prairies, land of the giants. Eggs, hash brown, sausage, tomato. Oh, thank you. <laughs> few days though. Yeah. Quite a few days. Yep. Yeah. We're, We're just still gonna keep got the going in. We got damage to do here. We got damage to do here for sure. I really haven't had a rod in the water for more than about three hours. I've been busy trying to eat these choo choops. Give me a little bit of energy to go for a boat ride across the lake, put some bait out. So we got to keep these swims baited up. Well, after a, a little bit of a sunny period, we have uh, the winds picking up and uh, seems like a system is rolling through and we're gonna get rain again. So we're just packing it all in and preparing for the rain. Just landed this two-tone 
common. It literally kited into the net. Didn't put up any fight at all, but it's 30 and a half pounds. Well, actually 30, sorry. And uh, really unexpected. Uh, just literally didn't put up a fight, just kited into the net. But I gotta say, really happy about this one. What a beautiful fish. And there's the other side. So my body doesn't recognize it anymore. What's happening, Paul? <sighs> this is the third one again, right after the cast, literally one minute. And uh, off again. So what's that? Three fish in half an hour? <laughs> More like three fish in 17 minutes. <laughs> huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a 31. Beauty. That's a new PB by half a pound. And the much sought after new PB only by half a pound. This is a 31 pound. Just landed him in a succession of three fish, one after another, two 26s, 31. Whew. Things are heating up. Lovely. Lovely. Well, it's looking like fish tacos and well, you got some Greek chicken going on there? Yep. That's pretty fair for a bit of fish and supper, isn't it? Ah, two for two. Okay, so things have been a little slower today. We just uh, had an outstanding lunch. I was just catching some Z's and this one rattled off. Looks a little bigger than it is, it's only 24 pounds, but what a beauty, gorgeous fish. So that was fish number one. As this was going into the net, Fish number two came along. Nothing huge, but a really nice looking fish. Okay, not anywhere near as big as I thought it was gonna be, but a pretty standard size from Lake of the Prairies.
on the menu today. Guinness Lots beef of stew. Goodness. <laughs> Guinness beef stew with cheesy taters. Oh, I mean. Is that a full scale? Is that? Yes! <laughs> we got a mirror! Fuck yes! What a turn of events. Mirrors are extremely rare in this lake. Ryan thinks it's maybe one in a thousand or one in 500 fish. Um, this is a special fish that came right at sunset. We were just about to get to eat. And uh, tell you honestly, I'm not, uh, I'm not upset at all about missing some, uh, some dinner. Let me turn this fish around so we can take a look at the other side. Here's the other side. What a pristine mirror. Beautiful mirror. I'm over the moon. So last night, right after sunset, we had a string of fish, and one of them happens to be a new PB again. Not by much, another half a pound. This is a 31 and a half. And uh, what a beautiful fish she is. Anyway, this just absolutely, I know I keep saying they're melting off, but this one tone stripped a bunch of line and has taken me many yards from the spot I was fishing. Okay, had an absolutely outstanding morning. Lots of fish. Uh, and then the big girls came in at 229s and just capped it with this 30 pounder. Absolute beauty fish. There. Mwah.
Ryan, right, you're into a fish, huh? You've been quite silent for this film. You know, and I got no real excuses other than I've been kind of just having not the rod in the water as long enough as it should be. And uh, I had a few issues with our, my marker moving on us, sliding down uh, the sandbar, which is kind of throwing me off because I've been trying to hit the cane pole every time. I say 25. <laughs> I say 25, bang on. Wow. So I guess I guess you got your iometer back? I believe so, boys. There is a lot of strain. I don't think I've had a carp this year that has made me so nervous. My heart is literally in my throat. <laughs> and I think it's like the same stamp of fish, but the power. This powerhouse has a little uh, mutation on his cheek here. And he has this white scale. But this fish in following years is gonna be some fierce battling. I've never had my knees shake so much from a fish. Like this fish, you are a true Decepticon. <laughs> It was a slow night, but within minutes, we're into our first fish of the morning. Last morning for me, unfortunately. Okay, so it's Tuesday morning, it's time for me to depart, unfortunately. 
It's been an absolutely outstanding few days. Um, I've broken PBs, multiple 30 pound fish, countless 20 pound plus fish. It's just been ridiculous. It's been off the charts. Well and truly worth the, uh, the effort that's been put in. And I can't thank Ryan enough for the baiting campaign. The amount of time that that man has put into this is, has made it what it is. This has been absolutely fantastic. So this just happened, 20 minutes apart. First fish at the top that I'm holding, 30 pound, well 30 and a half. And that second little scrapper there, 125. Absolutely fantastic morning. And I'm leaving today, so what a great gift to send me off. The wind's picking up today. It's, it's definitely coming out of the south, which is kind of nice. It's coming into our swim at a cross angle, which it should blow the green sludge out. But tomorrow we're supposed to get some really inclement weather, like really cold, drop in temperature, rainy. It looks like a lot of rain too, if it hits us where it's supposed to. So hopefully that sparks something crazy for me and Polly. And uh, you know, Thursday, looking even better a lot of switching wind it's going to be the day after a system rolls through the sun's supposed to pop out it's supposed to be like 20 degrees with switching winds all day which in my experience just fires these pigs up it's not part of a walk really no. it's uh you know 100 meters kind of thing around a little bay it gets a little tiring when you're carrying 100 pounds of particles um true and you got to watch out for these dang birds because they like to crap on you too. Runs last year that really scared me. I had a 40 from this corner that was just a belter. I, I hooked her up in the corner off of a small spread of bait. And she took me up and over this sandbar and out. And probably at least a good 90 yards or more. The first run literally got her to my feet. She belted off to the same spot she was past the bar another time. I couldn't stop her, I couldn't turn her. My knees were buckling, my stomach was in my mouth. I have never been so happy to net a fish in my life. That, that fish was a tremendous moment in my car fishing career. I get emotional talking about it right now. But we're gonna go get some bait out and we're gonna find another one of those beauty. Fine fish. Oh shit! And Polly all of a sudden has the hot rod. Take a net with you when you're going that way. Holy fuck! This fish hasn't stopped. We tend to have. That's another hook pull. We had a lot of fish that. Um... Fuck sake! The Ronnie's coming off. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is two fish in a row. Third today, lost on the Ronnie. That's it. Tell me what's going on though. I, I can't. You just had what? Like, two fish lost? Yeah. And then I, you changed rigs? I changed rigs to my confidence rig, which is uh, two boilies and uh, a pop-up so like sandwich of sorts and uh i can't move this i can barely move this fish off off the ground like, holding bottom
I just broke my PB again. This is the third time I'm breaking my PB on this trip. And um, this is an immaculate common that came in at 32 pounds. Ryan pretty much told me the story of his 40 and literally half an hour later, I land a fish that acted very, very similarly to his fish. And that is what I've come to the prairies for. Actually, I'm hoping for a bigger one, but I love this fish. This is beautiful. Thank you, Ryan, putting me on the fish. We'll get this one back. The weather's changing. Hopefully get a few more. I honestly couldn't have asked for a, a nicer fish today. Perfect common in the prairies. Let's let this one go. Thank you, Mr. Ginter. Oh, we Fantastic we'll time. Again. Just on closing, I'm about to leave and this fella just broke his PB again. Who knows what's around the corner here. Prairies is where dreams come true, right? No? Absolutely. <laughs> Land of giants. Okay, Jones. See you later. All right. It's been a blast. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. Well, we're sitting here on what? What's today is Tuesday. We're supposed to get some of this weather system that's blowing in tomorrow. And definitely the weather is blowing from the south. And with the dropping pressure, it's it, it changes the swim bladders on a lot of fish and like predatory fish like walleye and pike and and trout ex trout especially can balance their swim bladders way quicker than a lot of uh, bait fish or other species and what we're having going on today is definitely from what i'm seeing with all the bird action on the lake as soon as the wind picked up and we got a bunch of white caps rolling in and it just stirred things up it also with the low, with the dropping pressure, I believe it's it's pushing the bait fish to the surface that can't equalize their swim bladders, which now is making it vulnerable for all these birds to just gorge on them as it, as they get stuck in the waves. And it's just it's turned on in the last couple hours, and it, in the horizon, it definitely looks like a uh, system is on its way in from the south, which normally means some pretty good some pretty good thunderstorms it's beautiful out here today other than the wind has picked up a lot the fishing has died down a little bit but the there's a theory that i've been working on is like with the, with the dropping pressure it, it creates the hatches either turn off or turn on at this time of year and the hatches can be prolific on this like massive hatches the bugs will just come out of nowhere and fill your bivvies and probably it's, it's just nuts and uh there's so much natural forage in this lake when the implement weather comes and changes is usually key times and pressure changes are one of those times now with it dropping i'm really looking forward to what this evening brings we're gonna put some bait in and just it, i have a good feeling about today tomorrow and the following days to come with the system coming in and it turning stuff up is always a good sign. Well, what a turn of event. Right after I broke my PB with the 31 and a half, I land this beautiful 32 pound common. Again, an increment of half a pound. Unbelievable. It's just a beast to put up an amazing fight again. I could get used to this. Not long after I landed this mid double, again, pristine common, just a beautiful fish. Here on the prairie banks, we're heading in for some weird weather. We're gonna have a system coming through with a lot of rain. I'm gonna have to get ready for it. And uh, fuck, cut it off, fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> fuck. Look at that. Let's see.
So last night we were expecting a, a big storm to roll through and um, we called it a little bit early. I went and uh, had a good night's sleep in a bed for a change and got myself fully rested and now I'm back on the bank. Left my rod in the bivy. Was really worried about getting it nicked by someone but Ryan assured me that uh, nobody comes down here so everything's in order. We're just gonna get our rods out. I did forget to get the boilies from the house so have to go back and grab those boilies because we have to put in a little bit more bait and uh, it's feeling really really carpy right now. I uh, expect nothing less but carnage today but we will see. What you tying up? Uh, confidence rigs. Multi-rig, single bait. Bait flossed. Um, citrus with a much line, uh, a uh, much pineapple high vis chop up. And it creates a nice buoyant rig. And I like the multi-rig. I like the the effectiveness of it. I usually use it on a short hook link. It tends to be better for me. So I'm gonna go back to my confidence rig that I usually produces some big fish for me and then uh, it was the rig that did it for me last weekend. I fished a multi-rig with a uh, homemade on it and I also just fished a regular hair rig. Just double bottom baits or a snowman rig it was just minty. Fish had some violent violent thrashing going on at the hook at the hook take and uh it seems like i've picked up my marker somehow some way and i'm bringing it all in with me he went around once caught the bottom and we dragged the 2.2 pounds and the fish all the way back I found my spot. Come on, I'll take a nice big lump or some. You mean Mr. Lump and some? Lump and some? Lump and some. And now, since she skirted all the way right, working her way back out now because she went up into the shallows. Oh, she came off right as she slipped over the cord. <laughs> oh. So, just had myself a brace of uh, a regular 23-er, maybe 22. And this absolute sow cow of a 33-pounder. Look at that tank. Oh, yeah. Freaking look at that piece, buddy. A fish like this, of this caliber, if it had a gut like some of Polly's fish, it would be a 40. This is a super long 33 and change. The head on it, massive. Look at this body. I'm gonna gracefully let her go. I was just gonna tie up another rig quickly before the system comes in and hits us and uh, get a few scoops of bait out. The fish are definitely in. We're consistently landing big fish. I think it's three or four 40s today already. 30s. 30s, no 40s, sorry, 30s. And which is a fabulous day anywhere, let alone a morning session. And we've just got into them. This system, the pressure drop, it's gonna be epic. Oh. Hey, he said epic! There it is! This. You guys gotta check this out. Check that system out. Oh, it's actually uh, not that dark anymore. 
it's because it's almost right over top of us. And like, if you look at this stuff, it's moving fast. The wind just changed directions. Um, this is definitely some inclement weather for sure. And the fish are having every bit of it. The fish are having it for sure. Every single fish feels solid, including this one. The wind actually died down a little bit and this feels very heavy. Although the wind and fish have been feeling extra heavy today. Yeah, they're definitely turned on. Most of you may have seen the Bayfront campaign. I'm uh, about 12 sessions in and uh, I still haven't landed a 30 at Bayfront. Yet, we're not at Bayfront, we're not in Ontario, we're on the prairies. And show it later. That's another great fish, bud. Definitely a wide, nice sized fish. Like a 30, but the rain is gonna come in very soon. It's gotten me all wet too. That's okay. Woo! Go! <laughs> you know what's good fishing when you're releasing Releasing 30s, 30s without pictures. That's what we do in the prairies. Fortunately. And you're into another fish. And it seems like it's just Mr. Consistency today. It's just one after another, one rod, then the other rod. Once we deal with the fish on the bank and we get the rods back out, we don't have to wait long. And your clicker. That's gone. why. And my clicker has gone because of so many dang fish. We'll be buying another reel. Watch out, Simon. This will be an upgrade. This is the MCAS. I've been warned about the MCAS. Figured it's a bargain reel. They're good reels. It done me good, but I think it's time to spend a little bit more money on some equipment. So look out, Simon. Here I come. On her, though. As we're just going to slip her right back, and hopefully her mom comes to visit. Look at it go! Look at it go! Yeah! Get in! Not such a big fish after all, but a nice mid-20. Let her go back. Well, I'm gonna head home, and I'm uh, gonna go get my cot and my sleeping blanket, because I... sleeping bag. Because I figured I was gonna be done for the nights, but... It's too carpy, I gotta come spend the night again. So I'm off to go get my bedding, give my cat some loving, and I'll be right back. All right. Whoa, whoa, hey! Can you see that right there? Uh, 
Just a scuff. Oh. oh. That's fine. <laughs> I saw you. I saw you back. Oh, fuck, man. It's got scratches all over it. Don't worry. I didn't, like, smack it. Back in the swim now. Anthony's went to take care of his uh, cat and grab his cot because we're going to be fishing tonight. Hopefully it'll happen. We just put some bait in before we went and had a bite to eat. So the spot is primed. Let's hope that a fish comes along. Look how far it is. I know, mine did the same thing. <sighs> so this 28 pounder <laughs> put up the weirdest fight. Took a lot of line, was fighting only on the top column of the water. And uh, I didn't even want to weigh it, but uh, Ryan insisted because I thought it was a mid-20. But actually, it's a solid 28 pounder. So, happy days. Have a good one, buddy. It's getting dark and I'm into another fish which feels like solid weight almost as if I'm as if I'm uh, snagged up on something but oh no hook pull no he's coming towards me regained that was weird oh this feels like some solid weight oh yeah He's got some head shakes going too. Heavy ass head shakes. What? What is this? <laughs> it might not be as dark on camera as it is out here, but it's getting towards uh, us pulling out the lanterns and getting ready for night bite. Mm -hmm. Someone's scaring some bears away. Net. Net. Yes! Oh, no! Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Get your net in front of you, buddy. In between your legs, as far as you can. Or as you can, we got three more feet. Yes. The fucking fireworks. They are for me. And hopefully, that is celebration fireworks for what is in this net. But we're gonna have Paul tell us what's in this net. I don't know, we'll have to weigh it. It's heavy. It's heavy. That's a good fish, if I may say. That's a long fish. That's that a long fish. That is a long fish. I bet you that's a big fish. 31. Another 30. It's all fuzzy, but that is a... Another 31. Woo! 
We knew the fireworks were for something this special. This is five thirties in a day if we take the one I got last night. No, this is number five of the day. You have had two and I have had two. No, I had three. We will check the footage. But we're getting lost. On how many thirties we got. Couldn't write this. Got a screaming take. It's got to be about midnight after a system rolls through. And this fish just locked me up on the on the marker. What we think was happening is she wrapped us around the marker and was just holding bottom. So I walked all the way around the bay and I, I got a different angle on her and all of a sudden I popped her open. And uh We got to sack her up, but we scaled her. Paul called this one. I couldn't believe it when I put her in the net. It's a 34 and change. Mammoth of a fish. We'll see her in the morning for a nice brace shot with Paulie's 31. being able to keep a rod in the water. This is Thursday morning after six days of fishing, about five and a half, and we are catching nothing but tankers. It's been a hectic, hectic night. And this feels like another big day. It was a little cold last night. This is big again. This is, this is the start of something truly special. We're gonna start pulling out these fish and uh, get the show on the road. This is the night special we've been waiting for. So what do we got here? Well, we got the last of the flurry. So this fish went 30 on the nose, first thing this morning, we we're at a loft. It's pretty bright outside, so it's crucial to kind of keep their eyes covered, eh? This is a 35 inch fish. Without further ado, 
first two of the night were, well, one of the first. Well, we're not gonna waste your time. There's six more. Got uh, a fish that you know is yours. This is a, this is a 34 pound. Came roughly around 1.30 in the morning. And yours, I don't know what time it showed up. But this fish is heavy. Two more 30s. <laughs> okay, let's go get the other ones. So, these fish came after 2 a.m. Ryan and I tried to get some sleep and uh, I got uh, a beautiful 31 pound, I think, right here. Just a beautiful, beautiful specimen. And uh, just a little bit later, and just like DJ Khaled, here's another one. This is another 30 from last night. I am at a loss for words as to what happened last night. I was so tired. I called Ryan Anthony a few times for my bivy because he couldn't, he, his alarm went off, but he didn't hear it. And uh, I called him Anthony and I think, I think that didn't register. <laughs> yeah, Ryan was asleep. Anyhow, there's one more fish. There were eight, there were, actually there was eight. One of them was shown first by Ryan, and now he's gonna get the last one. And we're gonna get some rest because this is this is tiring. Happy days. I say stamp of fish of last night because it was just mentally retarded what the average size was. We had 30, 30, 30s, and then a 29, just like a hair shy of 30 that I released. After that, we went on to a flurry of another 30. I dropped a fish that felt absolutely massive. I'm letting her cool down a little bit. She's been sacked up for a while. If I take her out right away, she's just gonna throw mud in my face, which we've had a few of. So we're gonna get her out. And, and she had a lifted scale. She's, this is the one that was rolling up on the bar for me. She went ultra shallow on the take and she, she stayed on the surface the whole time and I thought this might be a 40 pound fish because she brought in about 10 pounds of weed with her. And I'll call her black eye. So this bug right here, it's a great sign of natural forage in this lake. What this, is that? This is called a damselfly. And I've seen multiple of them, but when we've been looking in the shallows in this stuff after dark, it is absolutely chalked full of naturals like such. This is what these guys do. Once they're ready to molt and fly away, they'll crawl up onto the shoreline, climb up on a stalk, molt into a damselfly, and fly away. This is an amazing food source for big 30 pound carp.
I don't know what to make of this. This is just another stamp. Stamp of what last night had to offer. And uh, we're gonna let her go. Um, Paul just whipped, ripped up to the house to go get some new batteries and uh, this fish feels like every other prairie fish. Actually, it's very heavy. Hopefully it doesn't have my marker weight. Look at that. What can one wish for more? That's a solid fish. Turn that this fish for you, bud. That's a big fish. Yes! Yes! Oh! That's your PB. No. I think so. Thanks, bro. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. That's long and fat. Hold on, hold on. Let me get to your lineup. That I saw. And it's long, too. It looks like another 30 for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind if it's a 30. Well, there's only one way to find out. I didn't show you the fish before this one. We netted that one. It's in the sling. It's special. It's a new PB. By more than half a pound this time. <laughs> well, after like, what, four days, five days? We started fishing what we've been feeding and they've been definitely conditioned to the monster crab and the tiger corn boilies. So we've been putting in a little and not very often. We're kind of starving the swim now and it seems to be really working. And we're just picking off these big fish that have obviously been here for a month or two along the way. And over the course of the week, I myself have seen four or five fish that have been crapping this out on the mat and tiger boilies. So like it makes sense today to just put them on bottom, sit on them and something's going to show up to find them. Simple as that. My guess. We did. Shout out to Alex for getting me on the mountain house. These came in clutch. Thanks, Alex. landed this one and it's uh it's got serious potential it's like a 35 inch fish it's 26 plus pounds we're gonna uh get her back to release her now Welcome to my bivy. Oh, it's a hot one out there. I'm trying to keep out of the sun. I've obviously got uh, six days in with wind and sun combined. My face is um, a little wind battered and sunburned. 
but right now it is it is very nice in the bivy. There's a nice breeze going on. The bite has really slowed down. I still have to take pictures of uh, my new PB, which will wait a little longer, maybe in the evening. The fish is in some deep water right now and is, uh, is very safe and sound. Ryan's soon gonna leave to mend to his cat and uh, perhaps grab something to eat and be back for the night bite. We're gonna spend the final night here on the bank. Hopefully we'll get into some fish like we did last night. It was chaos every half hour. There was a 30 pounder being landed. Wow. Looking back, that uh, that's probably one of the most memorable nights fishing for me ever. And that's saying something. Get the big boy. So this morning at roughly 10 a.m., this long, beautiful common came in, weighs in at 35 pounds, my new PB, broken it five times, put up a, a pretty good fight just like all the other 30s we had last night. This is, this is what I came for. I was hoping for a little bit bigger, but you know, we always dream high. But this, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I really didn't. Oh, Polly. <laughs> right. What a fish. Thanks, bud. You know, Tuesday came around and Anthony left and that system was rolling through. And what did we talk about? Yeah. That the stars aligned. I called this one. We had a mayhem night. This fish is just gorgeous. I'm going to let Polly put it back. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye to my PB. What a, what a beautiful fish. Yes! Prairie banks, baby! This is my last night here. Tomorrow morning I have to pack up. I have to drive three hours to Regina to catch a plane back to Toronto and back to reality and back to work. This, uh, this trip has passed very quickly. I honestly, um, I don't know where the time went. It feels like all the days blended together. Um, it was very tiring, but very rewarding. And last night was really special, so. I will forever remember this trip. This has been the first trip that uh, I've taken and fished for seven days consecutively. And next year I will be doing a 10 day trip in Europe. And I'm really looking forward to that as well. But this, this is, this is probably the best fishing in Canada that I've experienced. The size of the fish here, the potential. I will be back and I will hunt some bigger fish. Happy days. Well, good morning. This is the final day. This morning we had absolutely no runs. 
Although through the night, I got 229 and three quarters. I put them back, hoping to get some real 30s into the sling. And the bite died off, even though it's looking extremely carpy right now. I had to pack up all my stuff. I have to be in, in the airport uh, in about two hours. So, so Ryan, he has caught a nice 34 pounder that he's gonna show you before we wrap this up. Let's go take a look. It is a fabulous looking fish. Here we have. Thank you guys for tuning in to Prairie Banks. Like and subscribe. It's been an epic session. Thank you, Paul, for coming and joining me on the bank. Thanks, Anthony, for coming and catching these monster fish with me. Until next year. See you guys.